Hi, sweeties. Today we are going to do our six month review. I'm sorry. It's actually an eight month update, eight month, re eight month review of the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium Saute Pan. <laughs> That's right. Whoa. The Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium Saute Pan. This is the five quart. Oh. And this is the three quart size. Both come with a glass lid that have a stainless steel ring and handle. Cast stainless steel handles that are riveted on. These are metal utensil safe and oven safe up to 500 degrees. The larger five quart size comes with a helper handle as well. And the pans are hard anodized aluminum. Please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. And now let's talk more about these Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium Saute Pans. Now I've been using these pans, the three quart and the five quart saute pans for about eight months now. And they look to be in good condition. If you look at the bottom of one of the pans, they're not scratched up or damaged, anything like that. The um, anodized aluminum coating is not flaked off or anything. So we're gonna put them to the test and see if we can do that frying an egg with no oil like we did when the pan was new and see if it will stick. You can see there is some staining on the outside, but I just have come to the realization that I'm very hard on pans, but when they're this dark color, you can't really see it as well, unless you're looking like close up at them like we are now. You know, there's some discoloration on the bottom. I'm sure I could hit these with a, an SOS pad or some barkeeper's friend and that would help out. All right, let's turn that on let it preheat for a little bit and then we will get to cooking a couple of eggs and see if they will you know just fry up a couple of eggs and see if they'll stick or not now the ninja foodie never stick premium is oven safe to 500 degrees and there are actually two lines of ninja foodie never stick there's the premium version which i have so it's a thicker base let's go ahead and try that thick base a anodized aluminum inside and outside, as well as these cast stainless steel handles. Now the kind of uh, standard version of the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Pan has a hollow handle, the base is not as thick, and it has some other type of, uh, I think like a silicone or so coating, I'm not sure I have to check that out, on the outside. Um, Ninja Foodie Never Stick, I purchased these from Amazon, but you can purchase them directly from the Ninja Foodie website, or you can purchase them from Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh. And there you go. No oil. Let's get this under there. And no sticking. It's nice and brown. I think I might have had that temperature a little bit too high, but the eggs did not stick to the pan. No oil in the pan at all. And um, yeah, eight months later, it still cooks with no oil. Let's try the five quart as well. Let's try with the Ninja Foodie Never Stick five quart pan. And this has been my go-to pan for the last eight months because you can cook a complete family meal in a pan this size. It's um, again, oven safe to 500 degrees. So when I make something like chicken and rice, I start it on the stove top, brown my chicken thighs. And in this five quart uh, pan, Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium, I can fit about eight large chicken thighs in there. Um, two or three cups of rice, you can put some vegetables on top and let them steam down or simmer down while your chicken and rice is cooking. Move the whole thing in the oven to finish gently. Let's try these eggs here. And again, this is two eggs, no oil. Let that fry up for a second. And um, it has worked out really, really well. So my biggest, uh, I guess issue with each of these Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium is that the bottom of these uh, saute pans 
are not completely flat. And I'm gonna go grab a level in a minute. <laughs> Let me cool down first and um, show you. Actually, I can show you um, if I get a, a little oil. Let me finish this first. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'll show you more about this later, but you can see how, although it's a bit flat in the center, there's a, quite a bit of a gap off to either side. And when you pour in your oil, it does run off to those sides of the pans and leaves your center of your pot bare. Yep, <laughs> I think I've got the pan a little too high now. Let me, let's see what we got here. Oh, there you go. Spatula slides under. Oh, that'd be a teeny tad bit of sticking on that side. Let me go around here. Let's see what happens. Excuse me. Oh, nope, it's fine. Yeah, no sticking. That egg is sliding around real good. No additional oil added. So yeah, that's after eight months of use and pretty heavy use. I've used this, I mean, multiple times a week over the last eight months. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So let's flip those over and let those finish. All right, I broke my yolk a little bit when I flip it. I'm gonna take that out. And look at that, that pan is just about clean except for a little extra yolk and that's it. So let me show you what I was talking about with the pan not being perfectly flat. You might be able to see when I add some oil in here. And my son actually pointed this out to me. If you're trying to shallow fry and you put a few tablespoons of oil in the pan, it all runs out to the edge. And you have to sort of, you know, really well coat the bottom if you want to do a little shallow fry. You see what I mean? All of the oil starts to run out towards the sides of the pan, which is problematic. So I wish that the bottom was perfectly flat and that would help a lot with this. Um, instead of having to add like a half a cup of oil, you could maybe use a quarter cup of oil or so to shallow fry and it would coat the whole bottom of the pan. See how it pulls on the side and it's empty there in the middle. Watch, even if I kind of shake it around to try to get it evenly coated, if you let it sit for a minute or two, then you can see how the, pan, the oil just retreats to the ends of the pan, to the sides, and leaves the middle bare. Now for another test, we're going to cook these marinated beef short ribs. Look, I cheated a little bit. These are a pre-marinated frozen Trader Joe's product. They are delicious. One of my favorite things to get from Trader Joe's. I'm gonna do a whole like video about the things, the products I love from Trader Joe's. I mean, just the freezer section is gold. Now, oops, let me put the fan on. There we go. Now, with these sweet glazes, they can be a mess to clean up. So we'll see how the pan cleans up once this sugary marinade has cooked on. See, this is another reason why I like a large five and a half, five quart skillet. Look how much it fits in there in one batch. That's a lot of food. Can I get one more? I bet you I can, I sure can. Look at that. They only need about two or three minutes per side. Look, let's flip that over. Look at that color. Look at that color. Now 
Now with some nonstick pans, you don't get good a good sear. And the sugar in that marinade does definitely help with that color. But you get a good sear in that Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium. So I really do like the pan. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. Let's see what they look like. And then we'll see how the pan cleans up. It's good. You definitely don't wanna overcook these. They're thin. Oh, look at that. Very tasty. We'll let the pan cool and then we'll wash. But you can, you can see there how charred on that marinade is. It's smoking hot right now. Um, and that is one thing that you can put this over high heat with no problem. I know a lot of other nonstick, like the ceramic coated nonstick pans will tell you not to use high heat, but you can use high heat with this um, Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium. We've let our pan cool to the touch and I'm gonna wash this up, but before I you know, put it in some warm soapy water. Let's just test one thing out. Hang on one second. I'm just gonna take a paper towel. Make sure you can see. And just try and wipe. Oh, actually here. You know, in some parts it will even come off without the fat. Yeah. That sugar from the marinade was really cooked on there, but even without really washing it, you can wipe some of it out pretty easily. Let's go ahead and put it in the sink. Some warm water, a little dish detergent. and give it a little scrub. This is just with a nylon, nylon little bristle brush there. on the bottom there, but for the most part, the pan is mostly clean. It's just a couple of seconds with the brush. Not bad at all. Still non-stick after eight months, still cleans up easily. So I put that level there in the center and that part there looks level right there in the center, but you can see there's a clear gap right there. Look at that. See that? So it's not perfectly flat. You can see that on both sides, although I think it's more significant here than it is over there. So that's my really only big issue with the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium. And it was like that from the beginning. I didn't notice it um, myself, but my son noticed within a couple of days of using the pans. And so after eight months of use, that's how the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Premium saute pans have worked out. They are both still non-stick. After eight months of use, they uh, you can use metal uh, utensils in there. You can heat them on high heat, use them in the oven up to 500 degrees. 
it's worked really, really well. They clean super easily. Um, and I love that because this is, this uh, five quart size has been my go-to pan and they have a variety of different styles of pans uh, from like a stock pot, a skillet. I think they might even have a wok as well. So remember this is the Never Stick Premium, not the regular, uh, just kind of plain old Never Stick. So be sure that when you are looking at the label, you're looking for a Never Stick Premium. I have not tested the Ninja Foodi Never Stick sort of non-premium one, so I can't really speak on how those perform. So for me, I really do enjoy working with the Ninja Foodi Never Stick Premium. My only complaint is that the bottoms are not perfectly flat. There is a little bit of a, a, a slope from the center down to the sides of the pans. Both the three quart and the five quart I tested had the same issue. It makes a big difference when you're cooking. So that is one thing that I would like to see addressed um, by Ninja Kitchens if they could get a nice, perfectly flat bottom on the Ninja Foodi Never Stick Premiums. That would be the way to go. Uh, other than that, I love them. I love them. I would definitely buy more. The, less, the only big problem is that slight slope in the center. I hope you enjoyed this eight month review update. Um, please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and y'all have a delicious day.